The first thing we're going to do is make this block a little bit bigger. It now is 15 inches finished size and we want to make that 20 inches. So we're going to add two strips to the sides and these strips are three inches wide so that will add two and a half inch finished to the 15 inch block and here's a three inch strip that we will add to the top and the three inch strip to the bottom. So these two are three inches by um, 15 and a half and these two are three inches by 20 and a half. There we go, two penguin quilt tops ready. Well, almost ready because in the penguin parade pattern, you will also find applique eyes and um, extra attributes that you can add to your penguin. So I am for sure going to add some eyes and then maybe I'm also going to add the hat or a scarf. For applique I like to use steam -a seam which is a double-sided adherent um, and I use some black fabric for the eyes. So what I will do is trace the eyes to my steam -a seam, then I will cut around it roughly, stick that to my black fabric and then cut out the shape exactly. Then I can peel away the other side and press it onto my penguins. One little tip with the steam -a seam is to use a marker instead of a pen because um, with the marker you don't have to press as hard to get it onto the paper whereas when you use a pen uh, the line will get the line will get slightly um, wobbly maybe you can see it yeah I think you can so uh, when I push down with my pen you see the, that it has a kind of a bubbly texture the material so when you just use a marker you don't have to press that hard and your line will get more straight it's easier to get your shape down I just think it's um, it's easier to use uh, a marker than to use a pen to get nice smooth lines on this material so there are two of the eyes, now let's do the other ones. Oh, here we have something for the head and for the eyes, the ball on the hat. This is also going to be the hat. Yep, there we go. And with the steam -a seam, you can just peel off the back layer. Of course, when I say just, <laughs> I do it in a video. Oh, well, it goes pretty smooth. So you will stick this to the back of the fabric and I have already cut the lower edge so just going to stick it to the edge of the fabric. Then this sticks and you can cut it out. So repeat that for all the pieces and cut it out.
There we have the hat and some ice. So let's bring in the penguin. Hello there, little buddy. So here's a hat for you. Perfect. I think it looks fun. So uh, we'll go with this. And once you're happy with your setup, you can peel away the steam seam on the back and put it in place. Perfect. Everything is in place and ready to be quilted. For the quilt sandwich, I take a piece of fabric for the backing and then a piece of batting. And of course, one of the penguins. This makes a lovely quilt sandwich. Um, you can baste this, of course. Uh, with spray basting or with pins or whatever basting method you like but most of the time when I have a mini quilt like this I will just take it to my sewing machine like this because it's already a tiny bit sticking to the batting um, yeah uh, when, when you feel when you feel it yourself you can feel it sticking a tiny bit so I think it's okay like this, but you can baste it and then it's ready to quilt. And there we have my quilt tops uh, quilted. So for this one, I used a Tosh ruler to make these little flowers and then did some loop-to-loop -loop design in between. So here you see one of those flowers quilted and the loop-to-loops -loops around them. And the ruler I used for that is this Tosh ruler by Angela Walters. I love it. And then you use the inside. I also have a video on that from the one to three quilt along where I uh, show you how to do the flower. And the other quilt top, this one, I quilted with, just, with the squidgy ruler. That is this one. And I use the outside and I use the inside to go all the way from the top to the bottom and then the same path on the inside of the ruler. And then you get those pretty like um, bubble, is it called bubble? Um, the ornament shapes. So yeah, I think that's very fitting for a Christmas quilt. So those are the quilt tops all done. And then I also went ahead and quilted two panels for uh, the back of the quilt. Um, so yeah, just did some uh, free motion quilting on that just to get um, quilt sandwiches. All these materials are also included in the pillow quilt kit. Um, yeah, so those can now be cut up into um, two panels for the backing of the pillow and you can read in the blog post all the sizes and uh, measures you need to make your pillow. Let's cut this up, add some binding and then sew our pillow together. Four quilted backside panels. So two of them I'll put away and these two with their binding on um, they are going to become the back of this pillow. So when you flip this over 
and place one of the panels like this and one of the panels like this you will have a nice pocket to uh, in which you can insert your um, inside pillow here we have it um, without the binding on but it is all in place so this is the pocket where you enter your pillow and what you see and feel now is that the back is much more sturdy so instead of just having one layer of fabric here the back and the front of the pillow will feel uh, feel the same so uh, this will give you your pillow more uh, more shape more um, yeah, makes it just a little bit more sturdy. So let's add this binding and then the pillow is done. Ooh, look at that! Such a happy, happy pillowcase. So let's put this pillow inside to see how it really looks when it's done. There we have it! How cute is that? a happy happy Christmas pillow so there we go that is how we make this pillow you can find the pattern um, on my web shop and for that you will find all the links in the description down below see you next time <laughs>